Up now, page 353, the first, second, and the last of when we all get to heaven, that you have given us. God, there's so many times that we're blessed that we don't stop and acknowledge what you're doing for us or we don't realize where our blessings really come from. God, we're sinful people and we just pray that you'll look down upon us today and Lord, may you pass by and may that Holy Spirit flow from heart to heart. And God, if there's one here today that does not know you as their Lord and Master, I just pray that, Father, you will touch that heart and make them stop and realize that they need you in their lives. Father, bless our church, bless each one that goes to make it up. God, may we always to look to you for the leadership and guidance and everything that we try to do. And Father, bless this offering. Bless us as a people. Bless us as a nation. God, we do. We need you more now than ever, it seems like. And we just pray that somehow that people will stop and realize, God, that we have left you out of our daily lives, we have left you out of our government, God, that we need you 
and we need you that you make bless us as a people again and we realize where their blessings come from now forgive us our many sins because there are many In Christ's name we ask it amen Page 511, page 511, bottom of the page, the first and the third.
just to find it wasn't him God wanted me just to find it wasn't him God wanted me full of math Matthew chapter number 25 and that one's working it Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 25. And if you're able to do so, would you stand for the reading of God's Word? I'd like to begin reading with verse number 14. The Bible reads like this. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. Think about this. And straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received the two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou hast delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, thou thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In First John chapter number 2, Verse number 28 reads like this, And now, little children, abide in Him, that when He shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow in Your presence. We thank You, Lord, for this day. Thank You for the time You've given us to gather into Your house. And God, I pray that You might arrest our thoughts, our minds, our hearts, They'd be centered upon you and you alone. Help us to come, Lord, this morning and worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I pray, speak to our hearts uh, through your word. Help us, Lord, I pray, to receive those things that we stand in need of in this place today. Thank you, God, for every person, every family that's represented here. Thank you, Lord, for those that are listening by the way of radio this morning. Lord, we pray that you'd bless them. God, just give us what we need in this place. We realize without you, we can do absolutely nothing. 
May your Holy Spirit, Lord, move uh, in our midst. I pray for souls to be saved by your grace. I pray for your children to be strengthened and encouraged. Help us, Lord, in these last days to be up and about your business. In Jesus' name, and for His sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Just a thought this morning is being faithful with what God gives us. Being faithful with what God gives us. If you'll go back in chapter 24 of the Gospel of Matthew, and you'll study out that chapter, the, the Lord shows us throughout that chapter the importance of being alert, of watching and waiting and being prepared for His return. When we get over in chapter number 25, you'll read the first portion of chapter 25, the first 13 verses. And it's a parable that's given uh, concerning uh, the ten virgins, five wise, five foolish. All ten of them were going out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them had lamps. Five of them had lamps and oil in their vessels. The difference between the two, they were all virgins. They were all planning to go out and meet the bridegroom. But what the difference was between the two is five of them had made the preparations needed uh, to go and meet the bridegroom. They had oil in their vessels with their lamps. The Bible, throughout the Word of God, the Bible teaches us and shows us that the oil in Scripture is a type of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Five of those that were prepared, the five wise, when the bridegroom came, uh, they all went, those five wise, uh, went in uh, to the marriage. The five foolish came and they began uh, to knock at the door. And we find in the Scripture uh, that they cried out and they said, Lord, uh, Lord, open uh, to us. But He answered and He told them, He says, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. And the Bible tells us this in verse 13. He says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man uh, cometh. And as we think about this, uh, chapter uh, 24 is talking to us uh, a good portion of that chapter of watching and waiting and looking and being prepared uh, for His return. Do you realize this morning, as we have gathered here in the house of God, the Lord is coming back. It's not He might come back. It's not that He could come back. But according to the Word of God, He is going to come back. He has promised us in His Word. He told us in the Gospel of John chapter 14. He says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. In My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for for you, he says, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He has promised us uh, that he uh, would soon return. I don't know when it's going to be. I don't know the date. I don't know the hour. The Bible tells us no man knows uh, the day or the hour uh, when the Lord is coming back. But I do know this on the authority of the Word of God, he's coming. And the thing for us today, in this hour in which you and I live, is to be watching, to be waiting, and be prepared uh, for His coming. The scripture that I read over in 1 John uh, chapter number 2 tells us to abide in Him, that when He shall appear, will not be ashamed before Him at His coming. And I want to tell you what, when we get over into the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25, and we look at this parable that's given here uh, in Scripture, there's several things that just stand out uh, in this Scripture uh, this morning. So I want you to hang with me for the next uh, few minutes and look uh, at what these verses uh, have to tell us uh, today. The Bible talks about the kingdom of heaven. Go back over when you get home. Go back over to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13. 
Read that entire chapter because it's a chapter that is filled uh, with parables. And it talks about the kingdom of heaven is likened to. And if you'll go back in, in, in that chapter, in chapter 13, it gives us the parable of the sower and the seed. It gives an explanation of the parable of the sower and the seed. It gives us a parable of the tares and the wheat and how they grow together. It talks about the grain of mustard seed and the importance there. It gives us a parable concerning leaven. Also, it talks about hidden treasure. It talks about the pearl of great price there in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. It talks about a net that is cast into the sea. And then the good and the bad are separated uh, that are there uh, in that net. And so we get to chapter 25 of Matthew. It gives us the parable of the ten virgins. And then it gives us uh, the parable here of the talents. Now you and I, in, in our language today and in our day, we think about a talent. We think about uh, something, maybe uh, somebody's give, uh, God has given somebody uh, the talent to sing, or somebody's give, uh, God has given uh, somebody the talent to do uh, some uh, different task or something, uh, some ability uh, that God gives them. Uh, in this scripture, uh, the talent is a measure of money. that It's measured out. And it's not important. People ask, well, uh, how much is a talent worth? Some uh, There's a lot of different things. A wedge of gold, I think, or a talent of gold uh, back in the Old Testament was somewhere uh, worth about $30,000. A talent of silver uh, back in the Old Testament was somewhere in the neighborhood of two or $3,000. Uh, but it was not important uh, to what uh, the amount was. It was not important uh, as to, uh, to uh, what this was worth. Uh, that He entrusted uh, to these servants. Uh, what is important is their faithfulness with what was entrusted uh, to them. And I want to ask you a question this morning. How faithful are we with what God has given us? How faithful are we with what God has entrusted into our hands, what He has laid uh, before us? And so I want you to think about those things uh, this morning as we look uh, in this Scripture. Uh, the, uh, the, the parables of the kingdom of heaven give us a view of professing. You think about a profession in this world. It gives us a view. There in the parable of the ten virgins, five were wise, five were foolish. He here in, in the parable of the talents that he gives us, we've got five, uh, the one with five talents, he'll double the talents. We've got the one with two talents, he'll double those talents. we got the one with the one talent that would go and hide the talent and do absolutely nothing uh, with it. So think about uh, those things uh, this morning. Notice verse 14 and what the verse says. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. The kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling. And this man must have been of substantial means. He must have had a lot at his disposal. And the Bible said he delivered unto them uh, his goods. He calls his servants and he delivers unto them his goods. They were to take care of business while he was gone. I want to tell you this uh, this morning. You and I as a child of God, we're to take care of business uh, until uh, the Lord comes. Uh, he has told us in, in one of the gospel accounts, he said, says, occupy till I come. Now, does that mean sit on a pew? No. It talks about being busy. It talks about being involved. He says, occupy uh, till I come. Look at verse 15. We're going to go through these very quickly. It says, unto one he gave five talents, to the other two, to another one, uh, to another one, one, uh, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Five talents, two talents, one talent. A talent was, as I said, it was a certain amount of money that was weighed, uh, of measured weight. And what, what the talent was worth is not important uh, this morning. But what is important is how each person used what was given to them, what was entrusted to them, that is what's important. Uh, the five, the two, the one. 
You know, when we look at it and we see the five talents, he gives one five talents, one two talents, and one one talent. We seem, we look at that and we say, man, that's not hardly fair. Why didn't, why didn't he just uh, put them all together, you know, divide them up uh, equally? But notice what the Scripture says. The Bible said there in verse number 15, it says, uh, to every man, notice this, to every man according to, to his several ability. To every man. He gave to each one what that individual was capable. Notice this. He gives to each one what that individual was capable of handling. God is not going to give you something that you can't handle. Through Him, you and I can handle. The Bible tells us we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. He's not going to lay anything in your lap that through Him that you cannot take care of and that you cannot handle. So He gave to each, to each one of them what that individual was capable of taking care of or taking a care, a, a, a capable of handling. And you know, think about whatever God gives us to use. If you go over to Romans, to the book of Romans chapter number 12. And I like this chapter. Read the whole chapter uh, when you get home. But listen uh, to what these verses say. In Romans chapter 12, beginning with verse number 3. He says, For I say, through the grace given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it uh, with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with, with cheerfulness. And so he gives us all of this uh, concerning our service uh, to the Lord. And so back in Matthew 25, he said he gives these things according, notice this, he says according to his several ability. And then straightway he took his journey. And so think about this, we've got different abilities. All of us in this building this morning, we have different abilities. We have different things uh, that we can do. Whatever it is, God gave it to us. Whatever it is, God has given it to us. Uh, some of you in here have, have the ability to sing. You sing, I mean, just, just great. You just, you're wonderful when you get up and sing. And I love to hear uh, that singing. You know, we've all got different abilities. Some of you have the ability to be an encourager. And a lot of times you use that and, and you encourage somebody. You encourage somebody along the way. Uh, but remember this, whatever it is, God has given it to us. And God has had laid this to us, and it's to be used for His glory. Whatever it is, if it's teach and teach. You know, one of the things that I, I'm blessed with, and I, I think about this a lot, is we've got, we've got some folks in here, some young people here in this building that have taken on the task of, of teaching Sunday school. Uh, some of them have, some of them teach in, in, in different classes at different times. Some of them uh, teach in a class every Sunday. But they've taken on that. And God has given them and God has blessed them with the ability uh, to do that. It's great to see the young people uh, in the choir. And He's blessed them with that ability. And it's good for them, to, uh, good to see them uh, to use that uh, for God's glory. Because God has given them that ability. And it's the same way with every single one of us, regardless of what our age is. You know, God's given us something, and it's to be used for His glory. Now look at verses 16 through 18. Notice what it says. It says, Then he that received five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. Likewise, he that received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. 
Five made five, the two made two more. The one went and dug a hole and buried it. Now I want you to think about this. Who do you think, I mean just looking at this, who do you think that uh, when, when the master of those servants, the Lord of those servants comes back, who do you think he's going to be pleased with? Who do you think he's going to be pleased with? There's one that he gave five talents and he made five more out of them. There's one that he gave two talents and he made two more out of them. But there's one that he gave one and he went out and he dug a hole and he put it in the earth. He dug a hole and put it in the ground. Remember that Jesus in these illustrations, He was teaching. And He was talking about being prepared and watching and waiting and, and being busy uh, during uh, as we're waiting on His return. He traveled into a far country as He took His journey uh, into a far country. The servants we could look at, we could see the Lord as, as being the individual that took His journey into a far country. We could see uh, the servants as uh, professing Christians uh, of today. We could see the talents of what, what God has given us and the abilities that He's given us uh, to be used uh, for His glory and His honor. But the whole lesson is about being faithful. The Bible tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 12, verse 13 and 14, it says this, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You know, He's, he's called us to be faithful. Whatever He's given us, we're to be faithful with what He has given us. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse, beginning with verse number 12. Listen to this. It says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we're all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Listen. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, am I, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased Him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, but yet one body. And if I can't say to the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. You see, God has placed, the, He's placed individuals. We're all part of the body of Christ if we're saved by God's grace. And He's given every single one of us an ability to accomplish something for His glory and His honor. And every single one of us are needed in the body of Christ regardless, regardless of what He has given us to do. What we need to do is to be faithful in what he would have us to do. God wants to use every single one of us. You know, last week we looked at Moses. Moses made an excuse. God said, who made your mouth? Huh? Who made your mouth? And God used Moses in a great way to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. You think about when Jesus was teaching, a multitude of people was following Him. And they, they were hungry. And there was no way that they had time to go and, and to get anything. There's no way that they could have went and bought enough food to have brought and fed the multitude of people. And you know, there was a, a little boy there that had five loaves and two fishes. And you know, but they, the, the disciples said, we've got a, got a lad here that's got his lunch, five loaves and two fishes. But what is that among so many? And Jesus said, tell them, sit down. <laughs> you know what? They were about to have a feast. And the Bible said he, he blessed the bread, he broke it, and had them to distribute and the fish. And when they got through, he took up 12 baskets full. They was leftovers. And the Bible said there was 5,000 men beside women and children, eight of that. I'm going to tell you what, little is much when God's in it. 
You may say, well, I can't do anything. There's nothing. I, I don't have the ability to do anything. I want to tell you what, if God's given you something, whatever it is, no matter how small and insignificant it is, I want to tell you this, it is important to God or God wouldn't have given it to you. It's important in His Word, in His work. We're all members of the body of Christ. And I'm going to tell you what, if we'll all do our part, we do what, what he, is, he has for us to do, it'd be amazing to see what can be accomplished through the body of Christ. Look at verse number 19. I like this verse. The Bible says this, After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. After a long time. He comes and the Bible says He reckoneth with them. These, these three servants all had time. Every one of them had time. You know what? Every single one of us have time. We have right now. <laughs> we have time. We cannot go back and recapture yesterday. We cannot go back and recapture any time that we have lost and any time that we've squandered. But I'm going to tell you what, from this day forward, from this day forward, we have time. Until the Lord comes back, we have time. I don't know how long it is. I don't know when He's coming back. I know He is coming. And we've got until He comes as a child of God to do what we're going to do for the glory of God. All three of these servants had time. These three had, the, had an equal amount of time. Now, I don't know how much time I've got left. You don't know how much time you've got left. But whatever we're going to do, we better do it. And we better do it quickly for the glory of God. Notice what something else that happens. It says that, and he reckoneth with them. Just as sure as Jesus went to heaven, he's coming back. The Bible said in Acts chapter 1, verse number 11, as the disciples went out and the cloud received Jesus out of their sight, two in white apparel stood there by them and said, You men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus that you've seen go up into heaven shall so come in like manner as you've seen Him to go. Why are you standing here gazing around? Why are you standing here? Just gaze. And I'm going to tell you what, there's work for us to do. There's something that God has for us to do. There's something that God has given to you that you have the ability to accomplish. Whatever it is, do it for the glory of God. Do it for His glory and for His honor. Not that somebody come up and say, man, you did a great job. I'm going to tell you what, I believe we need encouragement every once in a while. But we're not doing it this in order for somebody to come and say, man, you did great, you did this, you did that. We're doing it for the glory of God. It's not about us, it's about Him. It's all about Him. Think about it. After a long time, He came and He reckoned with them. The Bible tells us over in 1 Corinthians, over in 1 Corinthians, chapter number 5, listen uh, to this verse. Listen to what it says. 1 Corinthians chapter number 5. The Bible says this. And I... I just, when you think about, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, when you think about the Scriptures and the Word of God, I'm glad that God has something for us in this. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, it says, the Apostle Paul in his writing says, We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. He says, we've got a better place than this. And he says, For in this we groan earnestly desiring, I mean, how many, how many of you are ready to go? I'm ready to go. If the Lord called me today, I'm ready. Whenever that is, I'm ready. If the Lord comes back today, I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready for Him to come? I'm looking for Him to come. I got up looking for Him to come. We came across, uh, coming over here this morning, I looked up at the sky. It wasn't a cloud in the sky. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be a great day uh, for the Lord to come? He's coming. It says, This we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle, talking about this body, do groan, being burdened not, for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought for us the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are co always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, 
not by sight. We're confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present for the Lord. Wherefore we labor. We do what we do now in this present life. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Every single one of us that are saved by the grace of God will stand, will stand, the Bible says, before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, we'll be accountable for the things that we've done in this body since we've been saved by the grace of God, whether it be good or bad. This has nothing to do with our salvation, but it does have to do uh, with rewards. And the Bible talks about crowns, and that's a whole other sermon, a whole another message. But I'm going to tell you what, if we've done anything uh, for the glory of God, and we receive anything from Him, I believe as sure as I'm standing here as a child of God, that when we see Him, we'll fall at His feet and we'll cast those things uh, before Him. We'll just lay it down at His feet. He came, the Bible says He come and He reckoneth with them. And it says, And he that had received the five talents came, brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. I've gained beside them five more talents. His Lord said unto him, I love this words, don't you? He says, Well done. Well done, thou good and successful servant. It's not what it says, is it? Well done, thou good and successful servant. He says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant taken what was given to him and used it and doubled it. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And notice what he says. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Enter into the joy of yourself? No. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. His Lord was pleased. And boy, isn't that, isn't that what it's all about since we've been saved by God's grace? I believe in, inside every single one of us that are truly born again, there's a desire to please the Lord. Not to please man. Not to please somebody else, but there's a desire within us to please the Lord, to please Him, to please Him. When I was growing up, i tell you what, it, it, it gave me great joy to do something my daddy was pleased with. I, he, had, he had something for me to do every day. When I got home from school, get your homework. When you're done with your homework, you've got this, this, and this to do. And when I did that, and did it the way he told me to do it, you know what? He was pleased with what I did. But I want to tell you what, there was some times that I didn't do it, and Daddy wasn't pleased. He wasn't pleased. But he says, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Hallelujah. The, the one with the two talents did exactly the same thing, got exactly the same response. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. No, I, I just, I love this. So you've been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strawed. I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. The one talent came in, not in confidence the way the other two had come, but he came in. He was complaining, he was full of excuses. He said this. He said, you're hard to work for. You're impossible to please. You're unfair. And all of these. Many people today believe that God is unfair. I've heard people that are homosexuals 
And they'll say, well, God made me this way. I've heard people that were alcoholics, and they've made, they've made the statement that God did this. God allowed me to get this way. I've heard people that were drug addicts that made the statements that God caused this. God caused this. I'm going to tell you this. No. A thousand times no. You made the choice. You made the decision. You decided. You made that decision. You did. The one talent came full of excuses. Full of excuses. The Bible tells us this. 1 Corinthians chapter number 4 verse number 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. That's what God wants from you and I. God wants us to be faithful. And listen to the announcement that was made. The verse 26 that his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked, the word wicked means evil, thou wicked and slothful, lazy. Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, gathered where I had not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I would have received mine own with usury or with interest. He said, you ought to have done something with what I've given you. Take therefore the talent from him, give it to him which hath ten talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that he hath. And notice the end of the wicked, lazy servant. It says, Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. As they come and prepare a song, I want you to turn to the book of James. Now I want to read you something out of the book of James. In James chapter number 2, the Bible reads like this, beginning with verse number 17. It says, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I'll show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith alone. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, For by grace... Are you saved through faith? And that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We're not saved by works. But we stop, we'll we'll quote Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and we'll stop before we read verse number 10. It says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. After a person is saved by God's grace, I'm going to tell you what, They're truly born again. There's some works that are going to follow. There's some works that are going to follow. The life that we live, the life of faith. The Bible says a just shall live by faith. Romans 1.17 The life that we live by faith in the Son of God. 
gives proof. That what takes place on the outside gives proof of what's inside. You know, the parable of the ten virgins, all ten of them looked alike on the outside. But you know what the difference was? Was the oil in the vessels. And it's the same way. You know, I look across this congregation this morning. Everybody looks great. You look wonderful. And I can see a, an out, on the outward appearance. But I don't know what's in your heart. I don't know what's inside. But I'm going to tell you this. God does. He does. He does. And what makes the difference is what's on the inside. You know, I've heard people say, well, y'all well, ought not to judge people, and we don't. But the Bible tells us that you'll know a tree by its fruit. What it produces, you'll know what kind of tree it is. And folks, whatever God's given you, I don't know what He may have given you. It may, may have been a five-talent load, it might have been a two-talent load, it might be a one-talent load. But He's not giving you something that you can't handle through Him. Use it for His glory and honor. Some of you sitting in this building this morning, you ought to be up in that choir singing. Some of you sitting here on these pews ought to be up in that choir singing. Some of you sitting here on these pews ought to be in a Sunday school class next Sunday morning. Some of you ought to be helping teach in a Sunday school class, a water class, a Bible school class. Bible study. You know, I've seen, I've seen people that God has gifted. In this church, I've seen people that God has gifted and have taught Sunday school and boy, God has used them in that Sunday school class. Their souls out of that Sunday school class have been saved by God's grace. I've seen, seen, seen people that are gifted, that have that gift. But I've also seen people that have had that gift that don't use it. that don't use it. Use what God's given you. Whatever it is, use it for His glory and for His honor. Don't dig a hole and hide it in the earth like the one talent man did. Let's all stand our feet. I don't know your heart this morning. Every how God may have spoken to you. This altar's open. The invitation's open. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. And God is speaking to your heart this morning. Come and be saved by His grace. Grandest thing ever happened to anybody is get saved. Maybe you hear this morning and you say, Well, I know I ought to be. I know I should have been all of these years. God has given me something. God's given me an ability. God's given me something. And I'm afraid that I have dug and just hid that. It's time for it to be used for the glory of God. Right here, right now. Every how God has spoken to your heart. Be obedient to Him this morning as we sing together. Bobby, what's your number? Page 541. 541, softly and tenderly. Mm -hmm.